My name is Tony Martinez. I'm broker of Extreme Realty Team. We have our main office here in Davie, Florida. We've added several new locations, Brickell, Carl Springs. We have Lake Placid. We have Orlando. But today is all about helping you to achieve the success that I know you love, deserve, and need in real estate. Now, I've been a broker for many years. Every day I get to interview brand new licensees. I get to work with the 100 plus agents that we have. So you get to develop after a while, a pretty good idea of what a successful real estate agent is doing. I also get to see what the ones that are struggling and unfortunately the ones that wash out, what they did and didn't do that caused them to not be able to make it in this business. So I just wanna share some things with you. I encourage you to go ahead and take notes, also post some questions. This is a live exchange here. So let's go ahead and start with what I like to ask a question at the very beginning, and that is, what is the number one reason why agents fail? Now, whenever I bring this up in a live setting, I get all kind of answers. None of them are actually wrong, but they never get the right one. The number one reason why real estate agents fail, ready, is lack of sales. Now think about it. Who closes a commission? Who closes a deal? Gets a commission check and then says, you know what, I'm out of here. The reason why agents don't make it is they simply are not selling enough. They're not producing enough. And this is what this session is all about. What can you do? What can you change? What can you implement? As far as your day-to-day -day activities, they can help you get to the point where you need to be. Now, have you ever heard the numbers in terms of how staggering Again, working with new agents every day, about 80% of new agents, new licensees, are never going to make it into their second year. They come in with a lot of expectations, and unfortunately, something didn't happen. Something went wrong. So when the time comes to renew their board membership, so many of them just end up washing out of the business. Well, let's go ahead and address some of the things that I believe are holding agents back right now. Number one is lack of funding and capital. Real estate, real estate has been described as a career, has been described as a profession, as something you're passionate about. Let's cut to the quick. Real estate is a business. Any business that's starving for capital is not gonna make it. That's the number one reason why typical businesses fail is they run out of money. How many times have I sat across the table from a brand new licensee and I've asked them, do you have the money to even join the board? And they don't even have that. Well, how are you going to sustain yourself? How are you going to go ahead and cover your bills while you start to generate some business? The reality is it can take you anywhere from three to six months before you see your first paycheck. How are you going to be able to pay your bills, eat, provide for your family while you're launching your career? So for many agents, they have no other choice but to enter real estate as a part-time profession. And you know what? Many companies will talk down to agents that are part-time. They'll actually discourage them. Look, it's a fact. We here at Extreme, we're very new agent friendly. Some of our top producing agents started off as part-timers or still are part-timers. What good does it do to have a full-time person in the business and they're not producing? At the end of the day, you got to find a way to keep yourself engaged in the business. And if you haven't started yet, put away some money because when you do go full time, you got to have something in the pipeline and you have to have a nest egg. Secondly, they really don't treat it as a business. And we see that every single day as new agents. And you probably encounter this as an agent yourself. You encounter this in the lack of professionalism that so many agents display. They're not treating it for what it is. It is a business. Study on business. Study the business you're getting into. No sales or business experience. Think about this. This is a sales profession. When I sit across the table from somebody and I ask them, do you have any sales experience? Uh, no. Do you have any marketing experience? No. Do you have any business experience? Uh, no. Oh, great. You have what it takes. Of course it's going to be more difficult for someone entering real estate that has never sold anything or has difficulty selling. It's going to be difficult for someone that has no business experience whatsoever in terms of learning how to act like a business person every day. The good news is there's great training out there. So whatever you don't possess coming in, make the decision, the commitment to go out there and get it especially in your first 60 to 90 days. Your first 60 to 90 days is gonna determine whether you're gonna have an additional 90 days or an additional year in this business. 
Get the training you need. Discipline. So many agents, new or otherwise, are lacking the discipline necessary to make it in this business. Here's an example. You were working for someone. They expected you to be at the job by 8 a.m., 8.30, 9 a.m., whatever. You had to be there. You had to be there or else you would not have a job. Now, that same person becomes a real estate agent and instead of showing up two hours earlier or at the very minimum the same hours they had before, now that they're working for themselves, oh no, let's just sleep in an extra hour or two. Let me just go do something else that's unproductive or doesn't contribute to my success. That's where the discipline comes in. If you used to have to report at 9 a.m. working for somebody else, then why aren't you at your office, at your phone, at your computer at 7 a.m., 6 a.m.? Because if you don't make this commitment, you're not going to make it. It's just a fact. Get that discipline. It's something you're going to have to develop and force yourself to do it. But without it, likelihood is you will not be successful in this business. The training. I know that many offices, many companies have cut back on training. And I explain it to agents this way. You know what? Agents demanded higher and higher splits. I want to make 115%. I want to make 120%, whatever that number is. Well, just like the grocery store, you ever gone grocery shopping and the bag of chips that used to be yay big, right? In order for them not to raise the price, now the bag is up this much ahead and they've cut back on the training side. So be careful. So the training, ultimately, it's your responsibility. You as the agent, you have to seek that training out. But it helps when you're affiliated with an organization that provides training and support. That's the key. It's not just all about the training. It's also about the support. Okay? So very important. Failure to embrace technology. There really is no excuse anymore. This is insane when I see agents coming into the business that struggle even getting their email. They struggle with getting on the web. No, folks, come on. I, I you know, I, I'm 56 years old myself, so I didn't, I wasn't raised with technology, but it's not brain surgery. I found how to go ahead and do it and how to find it and, and get the answers and everything I need. So you have to have a certain amount of technology background and knowledge to go ahead and be successful in this business. The associations, the boards, they provide excellent training. Take advantage of these resources. In some cases, people have to take evening classes or classes at colleges and whatnot. Whatever you have to do, go ahead and get it. But principally is make sure you understand how to effectively send and receive email. With that, you should be a go ahead in good shape. Last but not least, okay, or second to last and not least, is failure to prospect. We're going to talk more about this a little bit later, but unfortunately, this is one of the contributing reasons for agents not to make it in this business. You have to aggressively go after leads, and more on that in a little bit, and then no direction or business plan. Uh, when you sit down with someone and you say, well, how much money do you want to make this year? You know what the answer nine out of ten times is? A hundred thousand. For some reason, that is a nice round number. Okay, so you want to make 100,000. How are you going to do it? How many transactions will you have to close? How many leads will you have to get every day? How many prospects will you have to have? How many transactions will you have to have in the pipeline to allow for a fallout factor so you can still close X number of deals? So do you think that's kind of important? I've always believed that you have to work backwards. If you want to go ahead and make 100,000, not a problem. What's going to be your average sale price? Okay, determine the area you're going to work. Take that average sale price. What's going to be your average commission on these deals? Then you take the 100000 by that average commission. That tells you the total number of deals that you're going to have to close. Now keep working backwards. How many deals will you have to put in the pipeline to allow for a certain percentage not to close to still close what you need to make that money? How many active prospects will you have to have that you're working with to get them to the contract stage? Keep working backwards. How many leads will you have to generate on a daily basis in order to convert leads to prospects? You see where I'm going with this? It's all in the numbers. It's all in the metrics. You just have to go ahead and do that math. Once you know that it's going to take three to five to six new prospects or leads every day, now you at least know what that number is. You have to then implement a strategy 
to go ahead and get that phone to ring or you prospecting or both working in tandem to get where you need to be. Now, to be successful in real estate, these are the things that I encourage you to take note of. Ready? The first thing you have to do is stop. I know it's, it just was a go, right? But no, 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 no. Bear with me a second. This is what I teach all my new agents. You know what? You just got to stop. And I let pause. They're going, what's he talking about? Well, you got to stop getting ready to get ready. I see this every day in this business. It's called analysis paralysis. I've been an instructor most of my adult life. You know what I see? I see people in the audience that have every single designation, certification after their name. They're not producing anything in many cases. You know why? They always think that the next class is going to get them ready. The next training is going to prepare them. I've seen agents come out of the box, barely been to any training whatsoever, and already have somebody that wants to write a contract. Well, you know what? I'll help you with that contract. That's no problem. The problem I have is when an agent doesn't want to leave the safe, sound environment of the coaching environment of this training class to actually go out there and speak to a human being. You have to go ahead and make the decision that you may never, ever be completely ready. You just have to have the support behind you to empower you to go out there and take a chance. Stop wasting time. You know, I'm very, very direct. My agents all know this. I typically, when walking into the office on a Monday, I don't go into a whole lot of, well, how was your weekend? How, you know what? I'm here to work. You know why? Because when I have to pay the rent or rent, so when I have to go ahead and pay expenses and all that, they don't want to hear how my weekend was. They don't want to hear all these things. What I want agents to think is when I walk into my office, I'm going on to the playing field. I can have the chit chat, the conversation on the outside. The minute you walk into the office, if you're spending your first half hour, 45 minutes, talking to everybody, seeing how everybody's weekend was and what's going on with people's lives, that's 45 less minutes you have in your life to accomplish your goals. So when you go home that day and you look at your significant other and you look at your kids that you're supposedly working hard to provide for them, explain to them why you wasted so much of your time chit-chatting with somebody else. Go out there and make it happen. Waiting for the phone to ring. As my good friend Alex Sharfin once said, agents aggressively wait for the phone to ring. You know what? It's amazing how religious people become when they become a real estate agent. They start praying that the phone rings and they start lighting candles and start doing all kinds of things around it. Come on, please ring. I'm going, hey, hey, come out. What have you done to possibly make that phone ring? And even then, there's no guarantee it's going to ring. How about you try this? How about you pick it up and call someone? Maybe that might go ahead and do it. So quit waiting for the phone to ring. Pick it up. Call someone in your sphere of influence. Remind someone that you know that you're a real estate agent. All these people that you think are your friends and know exactly what you're doing for a living and are prepared to refer you or use you in their business, think again. The last thing they care about may be yourself. And that's why so many of them end up buying through somebody else reach out and touch someone, remind them of what it is that you do, and then get to the point where you feel confident picking up that phone and truly, truly doing some prospecting. Don't, leave it, don't listen to negative comments. That is one thing that I cannot stand as a broker, I will not allow in my office. You know what, this is a safe zone. This is a haven. We all have stuff going on in our lives. There's not a single office that doesn't have agents that are, have breakups going on and have illnesses and have disappointments and have addictions and have everything else. That's life. But you know what? You need to have an environment that you can go into that's uplifting, that's encouraging, that maybe for a certain amount of time in the day, and it could be 15 minutes or an hour or whatever time you can devote in there, you got a place where you can focus on building your business. And you know what I've noticed? Some of the most negative comments come from the people that love you the most, that you love the most. I can't tell you how many times I've met agents that their own significant other doesn't even support them in their real estate business. They're not even getting support at home. Imagine trying to get support someplace else. So you're going to have to develop a very thin, uh, thick skin. You're going to have to ignore what people tell you. Oftentimes, people don't want you to be successful because you're going to leave them behind. Forget about what they have to say. What do you believe? Do you believe that you can succeed?
Do you believe you are deserving of having the success? If not, then there's other issues that work there. So at the end, when people say what they have to say, ignore them, don't even listen to them, don't engage them, keep going on. Stop living in the past. You know what I've learned about real estate? Most people failed their way into real estate. I know that sounds nasty. You may never hear somebody else say it, but it's the truth. If you were that successful at what you were doing before, then why did you stop doing it and you got your real estate license? Most people don't go to college to get their real estate degree. They got their degree in something else. And guess what? They got laid off. They got downsized. Something happened. And then it's like, well, I guess I'll try real estate. So yes, I failed my way all the way to where I'm at right now. And chances are you ran into some problems, some issues, and it brought you to where, to you, where you are right now. You're going to keep living in the past? You're going to keep playing that bad movie over and over again in your mind? Or are you just going to just deal with it? You can't change the past. You can't roll back the clock. You can just reset it. What's happened, happened. Get on with it. Get over it. Deal with it and apply yourself because we don't know how much time we have on this earth. You may have nothing but tons of years ahead of you. You may have minutes, it doesn't matter. Use that time as wisely as possible by quit beating yourself up or allowing somebody else to beat you up over what happened in the past. Here's another one, big thing for me is stop making excuses. We live in a society right now that feels so so, I don't know, like everything is somebody else's fault, right? If something goes wrong, it's the government's fault, it's the man's fault, it's this fault and that fault. I cannot stand that mentality. Having young kids, whenever I see my kids going in that direction, I say, knock it off. You know what? Take responsibility. Be accountable for your own actions. If you didn't get out of bed that day, if you didn't make the phone calls you were supposed to, if you didn't wear your name badge, if you didn't carry your business cards with you, if you didn't practice a two-foot rule giving everyone within two feet of you a business card, you have no one but yourself to blame for you not accomplishing what you set out to do that day. So the minute you start taking personal responsibility for everything you do every single day, everything changes and you'll start getting on the path to being very successful in this business. Okay, so the P principle. I love this segment because in studying behaviors of very successful agents, what they do on a daily basis, I came to the point where I realized that so many of what they do start with the letter P. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to write these down if you can, and you put a check mark if you believe, and don't lie to yourself, no one's gonna check up on you, this is just you, all right? Do you feel that you are implementing each of these items I'm about to list? And you know what, if at the, end of, at the end of this session, if you don't have many check marks, then that could be your answer right there. And if you do have a ton of check marks and you're successful, well that explains it. If you put a ton of check marks and you're not successful, just give it time. Or maybe you weren't honest with yourself. So let's go ahead and start with the first one, potential. Look, everybody better check this one off. Because if you can't put a check mark by yourself as having potential, that's just sad. That's really sad. I've never sat across a table from someone that I'm thinking about bringing on board to my company and said, you know what, I don't think this person has any potential whatsoever. Uh, so when can you start? No, it doesn't happen that way. We all have potential, okay? Every single one of us that passed our real estate license, chances are, chances are, <laughs> sorry, I can't stand when people in the middle of a webinar, they start asking questions like, I'm supposed to read language and everything else. That's what you have when you get live. So you have potential. So go ahead and utilize that potential. Next purpose. What is your why? There's gotta be a why. Because if you don't have a huge why, there's no reason to get out of bed, okay? There's no reason to get out of bed. So that's what's gonna carry you forward. You know what, I always hear the same thing whenever I ask people, what is their why? Okay, their why is their kids or their spouse or whatever, great. Well, remember that when times get tough because they will get tough. They will get tough. And that's what's gonna carry you forward. Define what your purpose is. Define your why have constant reminders for you so that keeps you going when nothing else will. Participate. You know, 
If your company offers training, go. One of the biggest challenges is that I see agents every day say, I want training, I want training, I want training. They just don't want to go. Well, what are you going to do? You got to, you got to jump in. You got to participate. So make sure that the training is offered by the board. Outside training is offered by right different speakers and everything else. Your own internal participate. It is huge. Prepare. You know, this is a game that we prepare, prepare, prepare. You don't go do a listing presentation and wing it. That's not the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to have your materials in order, your PowerPoint, your presentation book, everything in place. You're supposed to rehearse it. So when agents fail to prepare, the outcome is typically very negative. Okay, so how do you prepare? Work with your broker, work with other top people, with a mentor, whoever in your office is helping you to line up all the ducks that you need. So when that presentation comes up or the opportunity to work with someone, you've done all your homework, all the pieces are in place. Next, practice. Agents struggle with this all the time. You know, Seldom do, am I stumped? Somebody comes to me and says, well, what about this? Well, it's because I study my craft. You know, being a, a follower, uh, someone that believes very strongly in the teachings of Floyd Whitman, Floyd teaches what to say, what to say, and how to say it. Well, you have resources available to you in this business that didn't exist 10 years ago. 10 years ago, we didn't have YouTube. Now you can go ahead and pull up any subject, uh, cold calling, prospecting, FISBOs, expired, and there's a plethora of information that's out there for you. Well, you know what? Find a style that matches with you, and at that point, go ahead and practice it. You know, it could be with a family member, it could be with another agent in your office. Do role playing. Let that person be honest with you and say, you know what, you didn't say this or you forgot that. Let them go ahead and do it and then you do it again. And you do it again and you do it again. I tell you, if you just do it a few times, when the first live scenario comes up, you're going to be absolutely 100% ready to go ahead and do this. Passion. The, I can't say enough about this, but it's not enough. Here's what I mean. You can be a passionate idiot. At the end of the day, passion is not enough. How many people come July, uh, January 1st have tremendous passion to go out there and work out, right? How long does it last? A day? A week, if anything? So obviously the passion wasn't enough to keep them going because passion can wane. And then when, when the passion starts to wane, what do you fall back on? When you fall back on your purpose, right? So maybe you came into this business, you were ready to chew, uh, steal, and spit nails. And you ran into some roadblocks. Maybe it didn't get started as quickly as you wanted or the way you wanted it. So it's not your passion that's maybe carrying you through right now. It's your purpose. So amazing what happens to passion when you start producing. When you start producing, the passion just all of a sudden starts to come back. So passion is important. Passionate passion will come and go. Rely on your purpose to get you there. Punctual. Oh, this drives me nuts. I'm one of the few brokers I know I start my meetings on time. Why? Why would I punish or show disrespect to the people that were there on time by waiting five or ten minutes or longer? Have you ever been to a seminar where they're waiting for the last person to get off the freeway before they start the class? So you got there on time. A half hour later, they haven't even started yet. I don't get it. How can you act as a professional real estate agent and decide that every time you have an event or an appointment, you just show up late? Well, I tell you, that's going to hurt you more times than you can imagine. You're going to be working with someone, maybe they're military, current, or past military. They run their life on a schedule. Show up five, ten minutes late and see if that person is going to continue to work with you. It's not going to happen. So be punctual. You have total control over this. Prospecting, all right? Maybe it doesn't come naturally, but you have to acquire the skill sets necessary. You know what? 
I see agents that will be driving down the street and see a for sale by owner on the left, so they'll make a right hand turn because they avoid for sale by owners because we all know for sale by owners eat their young, right? So think about it. That person has a neon sign in their front yard saying, I'm trying to sell my home. But why would you knock on all the other doors? Go directly to that person. Someone who had their property on the market, it expired, contact them. So there's tons of training. There's tons of role play. There's scripts. There's everything you need to get the dialogue needed. You have to prepare. You have to practice. And then you have to do it. But it's amazing. Very few top producing agents ever achieve that level of production without prospecting. All right? You have to prospect. So get that going. Next. Be professional. Man, do we lack this in this industry or what? Everything from how we interact with each other, we don't return calls, we are on the phone, we're rude to other agents. How did we get to that point? How did we get to that point? So why is it that our industry, whenever they do uh, surveys and they say, well, where do you rank real estate agents as far as professionalism? We typically rank above or just below used car salespeople. Well, maybe it's because too many of us are acting in an unprofessional manner. So watch yourself. Why don't you be that exception? Why don't you be that ray of light when someone speaks to you and says, wow, that was very nice of you. You know what? Sometimes you're going to be on the phone with an agent that's less than professional. You don't have to lower yourself to their level. Maybe you're on the phone with someone that's brand new. Right? You were brand new once. Someone helped you. You didn't have all the answers when you first started. So help them out. It's amazing. We believe in karma. What goes around comes around. Be professional, and you're going to see a lot more people will be professional with you. Be proactive. All right, so what does that mean? That means that you don't have to wait around for stuff to happen. Take the initiative. You know, oftentimes, when someone says, I'll get back to you, it's their way of saying, I'm not going to get back to you anytime soon. And it's not always for the wrong reasons. People's lives get in the way. So why are you sitting around waiting? Be proactive. You call that person. All right? If they didn't call you back by the time they said they would, well, then you call them. If you have an issue on a file, an issue with a potential sale and everything else, take the initiative. Find out. Ask questions. Get the root cause. And then get the help needed to go ahead and take action to make this thing come together. Position yourself. You know, the last thing this industry needs is another general practitioner. My goodness, have you seen the number of agents graduating from school now? The word must be out that real estate is back. Well, so my joke is I can take a rock, I can point in any direction, I can throw it, it's going to land on a real estate agent somewhere. So when I'm sitting across the table from a brand new agent, I'm saying, you know what? Maybe you ought to consider, consider how you're going to position yourself in the market. You know, maybe you ought to become a military residential specialist. I teach that class. It's the best class there is, period, in learning how to work with current uh, military and veterans. Why don't you pick a niche like working with military personnel and see what can happen with your business? What about short sales? What about all these brokers that tell their agents, don't even bother with short sales. They don't work. They're no good. Of course they do. Is it easy? No. But you know what? For a three-year period of time, I traveled the country, taught 8,000 agents how to do it, so I know I can teach you how to do it. And we're going to be having more and more classes because there are signs that point to something happening in the future that's not going to be that great or that positive. And you know what? Even if that doesn't happen, right now, Florida is number five in the nation in foreclosures. So maybe you, learning how to work short sales, might be the one thing that separates you from everybody else in your office or enough to get you the opportunity to create that business. Prioritize. Not everything you have to do is of the same level of priority. I, I, you know, how many agents are working on their business versus in their business? Or the other way around, they're working in their business versus on their business. If you only have three hours, four hours, 30 minutes to work on your business throughout the day, then you better make prospecting and generating leads and working on your business a priority. The other stuff can wait. You can always do that at home later. You can always do it sometime 
sometime else, but throughout every single day, every single work week, you have to make sure you are spending a certain amount of time on your business, creating new needs and opportunities to grow your business. Prioritize. Not everything is on the same level. The items that create business should be number one for you. Be persistent. Don't give up. Okay? So the person said they'd get back to you by 12 if they didn't follow up. Now, there's a fine line here. You know, I, I see sometimes agents when they're working with their lenders and they're, they're just hounding them. There's a difference between hounding them and being persistent. Okay? There's a difference between hounding and being proactive. You got to find that balance. But when it's all said and done, it's a person that doesn't quit. You know, when agents work for sub-buy owners or when they work expires, a lot of people call these folks the first time. Then they get shut down, uh, the person doesn't respond or responds in a negative way. Then you see the numbers drop in a huge manner as far as how many people call them a second time and a third time. You have to be persistent. That person that just listed their home or that property that just expired, they may not be ready at this moment to hire a real estate agent. But you know what? 80% of for sale by owners end up hiring a real estate agent. The vast majority of expired listings end up listing with another agent. Why not you? Why can't it be you? It won't be you if you don't call. And it won't be you if you only call them one time. Be persistent. Keep following up until the resolve starts to weaken. And then the pool of agents that were after them has shrunk significantly where you stand a much better chance of going in there and picking up that listing. Pay your dues, okay? It's not an overnight scenario. Look, of course, you always hear about the person that comes into the business, had a family member or a friend that was buying an $800,000 house. I get it, I get it. Sometimes people have certain advantages over other people. But in most cases, that's kind of like the, a broken clock being right twice a day. You don't build a schedule around it. What you have to do is realize that this is a tough business and it's the reason why so many agents don't make it. So all you got to do is just understand that everything negative you're going through right now, everything negative you went through, the deals that are falling apart, the deals that fell apart, that's all your education. You're getting paid to learn a craft that once you master can provide for you and your family for many years to come. I don't believe in shortcuts. I don't believe you can skirt your way around this. We have to pay our dues. All right, last but second to last is being patient. Now, I don't even know what that word means. I had to look it up. That's just not my style. I see something, I go after it. But sometimes you just have to wait. If you've done everything you possibly can to make that deal happen, then maybe it's just a matter of timing. It's just a matter, it's going to happen when it's going to happen. So learn to be patient. It does take time to build up a clientele. It does take time to get your first check and then your second and your third. But if you're persistent, if you stick it out, then it's all going to lead to the magic word, production. All right, so we started with potential, and hopefully all of you checked off. Now, as you went along, how many of these did you put a check mark by that you are actually practicing these behavioral patterns? If you do enough of them on a daily basis, consistently, persistently, it's going to lead you to production because we see it happen every single day. So folks, all I can tell you is that we're in an amazing business. We live in the greatest country on earth. We're blessed to have the opportunity to go out there every single day and work a business that has no predefined limits as to how much money we can make. No other business I know of can make you this kind of money and provide you the flexibility and the freedom to go to watch your kids perform or play sports and everything else. But you have to put the time in you got to put the effort in, you got to take your knocks and your bruises, and you don't give up. 
If I can help you in any way, there's my information on the screen. My email address is Tony at ExtremeRealtyTeam.com. My, my phone number is 954-530-0211. Any way I can help, maybe just pointing you in the right direction, I'm more than happy to try. And it's an extreme realty team. We're always ready. We're always looking for agents of caliber, of integrity, agents that want to accomplish something. They just need the help, training, and support. We're there for you. All right, folks, have a wonderful day, evening. Stay safe. Take care.